Hello YouTube, this is NecroStevo, and you're watching my 46th narrated Wi-Fi battle. Hope y'all are doing alright. I know I said in my last video I was going to be around that evening for battles, but I had a little bit of a family emergency to tend to, otherwise I definitely would have been around. Um, so don't take that as precedent. When I say I'm going to be around, I do try to be around. To make up for it though, I have for you a fourth gym battle today that I had against, uh, I think the player's name was Tobias. He actually was attending the Fight League's um, tournament here at the University of Alabama, and he brought Pokemon with him, so we had a quick fortune battle. Um, as per usual, I only have the one team left on my Heart Gold, uh, on my Soul Silver cartridge, so I start off with Gallade. Seeing for Alligator, I figure Venusaur can take whatever he wants to do. He goes for Crunch, showing me that it's physical. Venusaur still takes that really well, and I figured if he wanted to swap up, I could see that here, because Venusaur could take any other move he wanted to go for. And he shows me Ice Fang. Uh, that turn, I believe I went for Sleep Powder. Um, just kind of wanting to put it to sleep so then I could Leech Seed the Switch in or something like that. But I flinch. Not too big of a deal. Uh, I figure, you know, I can still take one other hit. But now that I know he's going to Ice Fang, I'm going to switch to my Physical Wall. Uh, Weezing, which I really like the synergy between those two walls. Because not only can they not be toxic, their only shared weakness is Psychic. Which, back in Fortune, was not a very common attacking type. So you see how well uh, Weezing takes the Ice Fang, and here he goes for Surf. So that is a very mixed Feraligator, which I haven't really seen before, to be honest. Feraligators normally try to Dragon Dance or Swords Dance or that type of thing. But my Will-O-Wisp miss, so it doesn't really matter what he wants to do, because now he can just KO my Weezing with another Surf, which is very unfortunate. I'm about sick of this Feraligator at this point, so I go out into Aosagi, my Azumarill, Choice Bandit. I get hit by the Surf, take a little bit of damage. I figured that he stayed in here to set up on me or just to uh, go for strength. And that's exactly what he does. I figured he would probably have a return actually as his stab, as his normal type move, because water normal is pretty good coverage. But I show him the power of a real normal type move and go for a double edge, which is choice banded. And yes, I'm going to take a ton of recoil, but I will be rid of Feraligator, which is fantastic because the hacks that that thing was getting on my two walls was kind of annoying. And so now I don't have to worry about sacrificing either of my two walls to it. So here he goes out into Electivire, and I know I don't particularly want to deal with that without Usagi unless I'm locked into Aqua Jet. So I go back out into Venusaur, and he goes for Thunder Punch, which is great. Because I don't take any real damage from that anyway. Even though this is a specially bulky Venusaur, it still takes that physical attack pretty well. Now, most Electivire tend to carry another super effective move for Grass types, so I was going to double switch out, expecting the physical move, and go back to my uh, Weezing. So that's what I do, is he also switches out and goes into Star Raptor. So a lot of switching right there. This team doesn't carry any entry hazards uh, back in Fortune. I really didn't like entry hazards that much. And I would also say that they weren't as common, I guess. Not, not that they weren't as common, but they weren't as crucial, we'll say, to the metagame. But as I go for Will-O-Wisp, he flies. Uh, I'm sorry, I went for Pain Splitting. He chose to fly. I figured he'd hit me with a pretty powerful move and it wouldn't kill me and I'd be able to get my HP back up. And then on this next turn, I go for Will-O-Wisp as he's coming back down. Um, he said he went for Fly just to scatter what my Weezing wanted to do, which was pretty smart. And my Will-O-Wisp misses again, so that's two times I've had a chance to cripple more physical things that I've missed out on. Uh, knowing that he's going to stay in an attack, I was hoping that he was going to keep on going for Fly, but there he shows me that he also has Brave Bird, so Fly for scouting purposes and Brave Bird after you've taken your opponent off guard. It worked on me, so normally Fly isn't a very good uh, move to have, but I had nothing I wanted to switch into a Stab Fly. So I bring in Magmortar Moagami right here, and him expecting, I knew he would expect the Electric move, so I went for Fire Blast. He switches into his fire type, but the sheer power of Magmortar is easily going to do more than half to something as frail as Infernape. So I'm able to stay and go for two fire blasts and completely wipe out his Infernape. So he didn't even get a chance to use it. And he was actually pretty surprised that his Infernape couldn't take a fire attack or two. But Infernape's pretty frail. Magmortar has a high special attack stat. Plus I was Scarf, so he wasn't going to outspeed me. Now that he realizes that I'm Scarf, he goes out into Gyarados and... I do have Thunderbolt, but I'm stuck in the Fire Blast, so I figured this was a good time to go out. I believe I go out into Venusaur, because uh, that was the only thing I had that really wanted to take a hit, and I figured if he started setting up, 
I could just hit him. But he shows me here he has Dragon Pulse. So more mixed shenanigans, I guess. Venusaur takes that really well, though. So uh, I was hoping that maybe he'd try to set up on me and I could Leech Seed him or something like that. But he just goes straight for Ice Fang, finishing off Venusaur. Venusaur and Behemoth and Celestria, my two walls, did not have a very fun time this battle between all the hacks and the switching them in. Poor switch-ins on my part. So I know at this point I will be able to bring in uh, my Life Orb Gallade and hopefully finish him off with Stone Edge. If he's bulky, he will live it. If he is more offensive, it'll kill him in one hit. So it really depended on the type of build he had. But he it kills him. No critical hit needed. So I'm guessing he was more offensive um, in some respects. So that worked out. Take a little bit of Life Orb Recoil. He brings back out Star After and after the Intimidate, I don't really want to stay in on this thing. My only priority on uh, Gallade is Shadow Sneak, which is, of course, not effective at all against Star Raptor. So I switch into um, my Scizor, expecting him to fly, but he goes straight for Brave Bird again. And this Scizor has kind of a weird EV spread. It has a decent chunk of HP, some defense, and then almost max attack. Uh, so there, that kind of helps out. I was hoping after the recoil damage, I could just kill him with uh, Bullet Punch. But he lives. Somehow, I think that was just a min-max damage variation, because I doubt he had any HP investment on his Star Raptor. He may have, because Intimidate allows him to be a little bit more bulky than they otherwise would be. But, in that respect, he takes us both out, because he dies from recoil, and I die from getting hit by the Brave Bird. And you know what I always say, double downs are the best downs. So here I go out into my Choice Scarf, uh, Magmortar again, Moagami. God of the Flames, I'm going to be able to roast whatever he has left with Fire Blast. And I expected to just sweep through the last two things on his team with Fire Blast. Because I have this left, I have Gallade left, and I have Azumarill left. And s somehow his Electivire lives that Fire Blast. This is modest max special attack um, Magmortar. And I ha that really was min-max damage variation right there. Because most Electivire wouldn't live that. Unless he, for some reason, has special defense investment. But Electivire is not known for its survivability. So I was very surprised to see that he lived that. So I just bring in Azumarill. I knew that he would expect the Aqua Jet, but maybe he didn't want his other thing to take it. So I just go straight for that and knock him out. I'm okay with being locked into Aqua Jet because it is priority. Choice Banded. Stabbed. That's going to be pretty good on whatever it hits. His last Pokemon is Mammal Swine, And I'm, again, locked into Aqua Jet. And I don't mind because Glade is my last Pokemon. Uh, he goes for Ice Shard. Had he gone for Earthquake, he would have at least been able to KO my Azumarill. But surprisingly, he lives the Aqua Jet, which was also weird. I know Mamoswine is extremely bulky and it has pretty decent defense, but I guess I just wasn't expecting him to live that. But Aqua Jet is a fairly weak move. So, you know, you, you get one and you lose another there. But I do just 2 hit KO him with the Aqua Jet, which is perfect. And I believe that the last thing that he has left is... Oh, no, that is left. Okay, well, that's it. So, Tobias, if I ever see you again, maybe at another tournament, hopefully we can have more matches in the future. I hope you all enjoyed this fourth gen match. I don't do them as often because, like I said, I only have the one team. But if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, please subscribe, and please have a great week. I will talk to you all later.